Intro music builds with a sense of urgency and mystery, then fades under. Stop what you're doing. If you're a photographer, a videographer, or just anyone who follows camera tech, you need to hear this. The leaks are no longer rumors. The final, final spec list for the Canon EOS R6 Mark III has just dropped, and it is not an update. It's an earthquake. What we're seeing today isn't just a refresh. It is a complete reimagining of what a hybrid camera is supposed to be. Canon isn't just trying to compete with a Nikon Z6 III or the Sony A7V. They're trying to end the competition. But there's a catch. A massive one. One spec that is so shocking. It might be a deal breaker for everyone. We're going to go through every single leak spec one by one. And by the end of this, you will know if the R6 Mark II is now obsolete and if Canon has just created the most powerful and most controversial camera of the decade. Let's get into it. Short, impactful sound effect. First, let's talk about the heart of the beast. The sensor. For two generations, the R6 line has lived in the 20 to 24 megapixel range. It was the low light king, the fast shooting speed demon, but it was never the high resolution camera. That was the R5's job. Until now, the R6 Mark III is confirmed to be shipping with a 32.5 megapixel full frame sensor. And this isn't just any sensor. The leaks are all pointing to the exact same sensor found in the new Canon Cinema C50 camera. Let that sink in. Canon is taking the sensor from its professional, video-first cinema line and putting it inside the R6. This is a monumental shift. This 32 megapixel count is the new sweet spot. It gives you dramatically more room to crop in your photos. Think about it. Wildlife shooters? You now have the cropping power you've been dreaming of. Wedding photographers. You can pull a vertical shot from a horizontal group photo without it turning to mush. But of course, the first question everyone asks is, what about low light? More pixels on the same size sensor always means more noise, right? Well, not necessarily. This is a brand new sensor architecture, likely a backside illuminated or even a partially stacked design, paired with what is undoubtedly a new digit processor. Canon is betting that this new sensor technology and its processing can deliver better low-light performance than the old 24-megapixel sensor, while giving you a 35% boost in resolution. This move alone fundamentally changes the R6. It's no longer just the scrappy younger brother to the R5. It's now a true professional tool that directly challenges the resolution of its rivals. But the sensor, the sensor isn't even the real story. The real story the part that has the entire internet on fire is the video. Dramatic, low-volume, whoosh sound. I want you to prepare yourself for this. The Canon R6 Mark III is set to feature 7K, open gate, internal, raw, recording. I'm going to say that again, so you understand this isn't a typo. 7K, open, gate, internal, raw. This is the single biggest spec leak in the last five years. Let's break down why this is an industry killer. First, 7K, not 6K, which the R6 Mark II could only do externally to a $1,000 recorder. 7K, this gives you an insane amount of oversampling for the sharpest 4K footage you have ever seen. Second, open gate. This means the camera records using the entire 3 2 sensor, not just a 16 9 cutout. Why does this matter? Reframing. You can shoot one clip and pull a 16 colon 9 horizontal video for YouTube and a 916 vertical video for TikTok or Reels from the same file without losing any quality. It's a content creator's dream. And third, the most important part, internal. Raw. No more auto MOS recorders. No more fragile HDMI cables threatening to snap. No more rigging up a 5-pound monster. You get the full flexibility of 12-bit cinema raw light. With all that dynamic range and color data recorded straight to the memory card, this one feature, this one spec, just made the R5C almost irrelevant. It makes the R5 look ancient. It absolutely humiliates what Sony and Nikon are offering in this price bracket. Canon has effectively put a $6,000 cinema camera's brain into a $2,900 hybrid body. This is madness. But wait, how is it recording 7K RAW internally? This brings us to the next massive and potentially divisive change, the memory card slots. Say goodbye to the dual UHS-2 SD cards. The R6 Mark III is moving to a professional I.O. setup. 
The leak confirms one CFEX Breast Type B slot and one UHS-2 SD card slot. This is the definition of a double-edged sword. On one hand, you need the speed of CFEX Breast Type B to handle the insane bitrate of 7K internal RAW. There was no other choice. This is a pro move, but it's also a con. For the thousands of wedding and event photographers who relied on the R6 Mark II for its dual matching SD card slots, this is a problem. You can no longer write identical files to both cards for that perfect, in-camera failure-proof backup. You can, of course, record RAW to the CFE card in a smaller proxy or even a JPEG to the SD card, but it's not the same. Canon is making a choice here. They're signaling that the R6 Mark III is no longer just for event photographers. It is for cinematographers. It is for high-end hybrid shooters. And speaking of high-end, they finally did it. They finally listened. Sound of a subtle hallelujah chorus. The Canon R6 Mark III will have a full size HDMI port. Pause for effect. Yes, it's true. No more terrible, fragile, wobbly micro HDMI cables that break if you look at them wrong. A full-sized, robust, locking HDMI port. This is perhaps the biggest quality of life update on the entire camera. Thank you, Canon. It only took you a decade. This solidifies the camera as a true video workhorse. You can now reliably run an external monitor or a transmitter for your director without fearing a signal drop. Okay, let's recap. We have a 32.5 megapixel cinema sensor. We have 7K internal raw video. We have a CFX Press card slot and a full-size HDMI port. This camera sounds perfect, right? Right? Well, now we have to talk about the catch. The one spec that has everyone confused and frankly, a little angry. The IBIS, the in-body image stabilization. The Canon R6 Mark II is famous for its stabilization. It boasts up to eight stops of coordinated stabilization when paired with a stabilized RF lens. It is incredible. You can handhold a two second exposure. It's magic, the new leak. The final spec sheet for the R6 Mark III lists the IBIS at 6.5 stops. Abrupt record scratch sound. Wait, what? 6.5. That's not a typo. That's a downgrade. A massive one. Why on earth would Canon do this? Why would they take one of the R6 Mark II's best features and make it worse? This is the great mystery of the R6 Mark III. And we have three theories. Theory 1. This 6.5 stop number is only the in-body stabilization by itself. And when paired with a lens, it will still reach the same 8-stop coordinated number. This is the best case scenario. It's a simple misunderstanding of how they're marketing the spec. Theory 2. The new 32.5 megapixel sensor. The one from the Cinema C50 is physically larger or has different heat dissipation needs where the new 7K RAW internal recording generates so much heat that they had to shrink the IBIS mechanism to make room for a new heat sink or a fan. This is the compromise theory. They traded stabilization for video power. Theory 3. The 6.5 stop number is a new kind of stabilization. Maybe it's a more powerful, digitally assisted stabilization that is better for video, even if the stop number is lower for stills. This, this is the pivot point. This is the one spec that could make or break this camera. Is a 1.5 stop loss in stabilization worth gaining 7K internal RAW? For pro cinematographers on a gimbal? Yes, 100%. They don't care. For a vlogger or a running gun wedding videographer who relies on that rock steady handheld footage, this, this could be a catastrophic failure. This is the one thing we need to see tested. Okay, let's move on. Let's talk about the other parts of the camera. The speed. The R6 Mark III is listed as having a 40 frame per second electronic shutter. This is exactly the same as the R6 Mark II. Now, at first, that sounds boring. No grade? But think about it. It's 40 frames per second, but it's now reading 32.5 megapixel files, not 24 megapixel files. That is a massive increase in data throughput. This confirms the new processor is an absolute monster. The bigger question is readout speed. The R6 Mark II had a fast readout, but it wasn't a stacked sensor. You still got some rolling shutter. The big question is, does this new sensor improve on that? The leak says the sensor is from the C50, which has a 14.2 millisecond readout SP. EED. That is very, very good. 
It's not a global shutter. It's not the R3 stack sensor, but it's fast enough that rolling shutter in 95% of situations will be a non-issue. This is a true high-speed sports and wildlife camera, but now with cropping resolution. What about the thing that finds the subject? The autofocus. The spec sheet says dual pixel CMOS AF2. Again, sounds the same, but there's a new line item. Can store up to 100 faces for AF recognition. This is new. This implies a new level of AI and machine learning. This isn't just detect a person. This is detect that specific person. Imagine shooting a wedding. You register the bride's face, the groom's face, and the parents' faces. You can now tell the camera to always prioritize focus on those people, even in a massive crowd. Imagine being a sports photographer. You register the star quarterback's face. The camera will only track him, ignoring the referees, the linemen, and everyone else. This is a feature taken directly from the flagship R3 and R1. This is a pro autofocus system that is miles ahead of the competition. Finally, let's talk about the viewfinder. The R6 Mark II CVF was fine. It was 3.69 million dots. It did the job. The R6 Mark III is rumored to be getting a 5.76 million dot EVF. This is an R5 level viewfinder. It is a night and day difference. It will be brighter, sharper, and more detailed. When you're manually focusing or trying to confirm critical sharpness on eyeball, this is the upgrade you've been waiting for. It makes the entire shooting experience feel more premium. So, let's put it all together. We have a 32.5 MP cinema sensor. We have 7K internal open gate raw video. We have a full-size HDMI port. We have a CFX press slot. We have a pro-level AI-driven autofocus system. We have a 5.76 million dot R5 level viewfinder. We have a 40 frames per second shutter. And we have a questionable 6.5 stop IBIS. This camera is an absolute monster. It is a hybrid shooter's dream machine. It invalidates almost every other camera in its class. It is Canon in full-on attack mode. But what about the final piece of the puzzle? The price. The leaked price which is showing up on retailer inventory lists, is $2,899. $2,899. That is a $400 increase over the R6 Mark II's launch price. And it's a bargain. Frankly, it's a steal. A camera with 7K internal RAW and a cinema sensor for under $3,000? That is unheard of. Canon could have easily charged $3,500 for this camera. At $2,899, they are not just competing. They are trying to take the entire market. So, who is this camera for? And who is it not for? If you're a filmmaker, a small production company, or a high-end content creator, this is your camera. This is an A-cam for 90% of your jobs. It completely replaces the need for a more expensive R5, R5C, or even a Sony FX3 in many cases. If you're a hybrid photographer, shooting weddings, events, and portraits, this is your camera. The 32.5 megapixels gives you the resolution you've missed, and the video features future-proof your business for years to come. If you're a wildlife or sports shooter, this is your camera. The 40 frames per second speed, the new AF system, and the 32.5 megapixels for cropping is the perfect combination. Who is it not for? Well, if you only shoot photos and you love the dual SD car backup, this might not be for you. You might be better off finding a used R6 Mark II. And if you're a running gun vlogger who lives on handheld stabilization, you must wait for the IBIS tests. That 6.5 stop number is the one shadow hanging over this otherwise perfect camera. The announcement is rumored for November 6th, with shipping starting November 20th, just in time for the holidays. The king is dead. Long live the king. The R6 Mark III isn't just an update. It's a statement. It's Canon telling Sony, Nikon, and everyone else. The game has changed. But what do you think? Is this the perfect camera? Is that 32.5 megapixel 7K shooting beast the camera you've been waiting for? Or is that 6.5 stop IBIS a catastrophic, unforgivable